The government is counting on them to grow the economy. President-elect Faustin Akanj Atwadera promises to embark on development projects in order to revamp the economy of the Central African Republic following his confirmed 53.2 victory. Director General of Elections Eric Isuse calls on political parties and civil society organizations to encourage people to register, especially the youth. And those are top stories. Good evening and welcome on this 7.30 newscast. I'm Gladys Tata on Anchor. I have personally observed that most of our fellow citizens no longer comply with the protective measures prescribed by the government. Welcome back from that advert. The informal sector in Cameroon is said to occupy 90% of the active population, a workforce capable of creating jobs and wealth and boosting economic growth, said to account for 57% of the gross domestic product. Experts have urged the powers that be to rethink the approach of the informal sector so that it can fully live to its expectations. The regulatory framework should be tailored to accompany the sector that impede its emergence. Constant time bomb. The size of Cameroon's informal sector can be assessed both at the macro and microeconomic levels. At the macroeconomic level, the informal sector accounts for more than 57% of the country's gross domestic product. At the microeconomic level, Cameroon has more than 2.5 million informal production units throughout the country following a 2011 data of the National Institute of Statistics. As the informal sector represented 57% of GDP in Cameroon and in terms of employment, 90% of person would work in the informal sector. So this sector is very, very important in terms of creating employment. While it ensures the survival of many workers, it however prevents the country's development by maintaining low incomes and reducing its tax revenues. Many of people working in the informal sector feel very free to do what they are doing without any norm. When you have 57 57% of, uh, of uh, GDP, this show that you have fiscal opportunity, very high fiscal opportunity, but it's because people who have to go and collect this tax who fail. The sector continues to grow, and if properly harnessed, will create wealth for the nation by transforming them from SMEs to the formal sector. In order to enable the informal sector play a bigger role in the economy, a number of fiscal measures are open for those of the sector ranging from exemptions to task reductions. The goal of the state is to make room for more and more informal businesses to migrate into the formal sector, as you tell us, Luma Slim Davis. The informal sector wields a lot of economic potentials and contributes largely to the state coffers. However, the gains will be more if setups in the sector migrate into the formal. It's possible to migrate from informal sector to formal sector. Many incentives measures uh, taken by the, by, by the government. We can first uh, mention the rate of corporate tax, 30%. In this uh, new law, the rate is 28% for a company whose turnover is less than 3 billion francs. With the conditions provided in the finance law of 2021 to encourage migration from the informal to the formal sector, expectations are high. If uh, the operators can be convinced that uh, to pay tax will, will help the government and him to grow, develop, this enterprise, he will uh, agree to pay it. Cameroon's vision of achieving emergence by 2035 needs full contributions of all sectors. 
Economic experts propose that for Cameroon to attain a required level of economic growth, her population needs to be educated on why they should bank their money than exercising informal banking services. This is because when a majority of the population keep their money in homes instead of banking institutions, this deprives such structures from investment opportunities. But what then can be done to improve on the low rate of informal banking services in Cameroon? Joyce can be for our joint attempts and answer. Apart from the fact that most people have lost trust in the banks, there is a stigma amongst them that banking is for the rich, which is not the case, even with the advent of microfinance where people with smaller amount could go. The poor perception continues and much money is still being kept in homes. As a remedy, experts say banks need to adopt a more aggressive and friendly sensitization approach on the importance of creating bank accounts, even with chicken change. Secondly, they think the banks also need to tailor its approach and contain the accusation by many that they are treated as kings when they come to keep money but disregarded or expect proud notice when in need of finances or loans. Thirdly, experts also say government should instill the notion of banking in its people and discourage strongly the keeping of money in houses. A vivid example of this happening is in the northern part of the country where huge amounts of money were reportedly swept by flood from home Homes, a scenario that could be prevented. They must uh, have their account in the bank. With the money you save, our state can come and take it and then try to build a nation. You can also receive advice from uh, uh, the, the bankers, then this will permit you to, to grow yourself. All said, improving on informal banking services is a way out for a flourishing economy like Cameroon. Away from economic news, Faustin Arkanj Tuadera has emerged winner of the presidential election in the Central African Republic. The results proclaimed by the chairman of the National Election Authority saw the incumbent with win with 53.2% of the votes. Tonight, CRTV special envoy to Bangui, Caroline Oke, reports on some of the issues which played in favor of Faustin Arkanj Tuadera. Many reasons could be accounted as to why Fosteng Akanj Twadera has victory on his side again. From instilling a sound security machine to organizing the dual elections, the people of the Central African Republic are simply tired of numerous wars and want a stable country for development to occur. I spoke of the reawakening plan which comprised different economic reform which was engaged and are yielding fruit today. We have a new program with the IMF for the next three years. We have reviewed it and by mid-January we will have a board meeting. We have many projects. We began by putting in place the process of mixed security. We create an exclusive government to respect our engagement. Concerning the youth idling in the streets of Bangui, the newly elected president has a message for them. We should give up to the youth. Youth have to find employment. That is what we have done. Now that the results are in favor of the sitting president, let's hope that there will be no more excuses as to why all his enumerated economic, social, security projects will not be executed as planned. Once again, victory is on your side. You are in power, Mr. President. Hello, with me in the studio here is uh, Caroline Oke, who is just back from Central African Republic. Welcome, Caroline. Thank you, Gladys. Yes, uh, Caroline, you told us earlier on that uh, President Tuadera has just won the election. So uh, another victory for him. So uh, can you tell us what are his plans for the country's uh, reconstruction? Well, thank you, Gladys. President Tuadera has a lot of plans. He talked about uh, the beginning of the reconstruction of uh, the Central African Republic. It's a country that is start all over again. The last country in Central African Republic is France. Belgium and uh, Switzerland combined. That tells you how big this country is. So um, the president said she thinks he's re-elected. These are some of the projects that he's doing in that one. And he the construction of the community. And you know what's in Central Africa? And you know the buildings are really, really inactivated. So he's saying that he's doing it. And that one, the renovation of the uh, infrastructure of uh, the development in, the, in that country, of course, with the help of Minister, because the Minister is there in the United Nations, and the Supreme Court is there to help with um, um, the, the security issues there, as well as the reconstruction of the 
So, and what uh, is Cameroon's role, you know, Caroline, in the Central African Republic and as far as peacekeeping in the peacekeeping process is concerned? Well, uh, Caroline, I'm sure we'll be coming back to you uh, shortly uh, in a few minutes from now because uh, we have this uh, report here just coming in with uh, Nanji who is selling us that Cameroon's new ambassador, extraordinary and plenipotentiary to the Republic of Congo, His Excellency Lazam Puel Bala, has presented his letters of credence to Congolese uh, head of state, Denis Sassou The ceremony uh, comes after his appointment by a presidential decree on uh, October 15, 2020, an opportunity to revisit bilateral ties between both countries. Uh, uh, Gerard Nanji Eyambe, to tell us. Bilateral cooperation between Cameroon and the Republic of Congo is in good shape. This integrative project and many other social and economic gains were revisited during the presentation so ceremony to of the credentials of the new ambassador of Cameroon to Congolese President Denis Sassou At the end of the set ceremony at the People's Palace in Brazzaville, the Congolese head so of state granted a courtesy audience and made contact with the Cameroonian diplomat Laza Poe Bala, the head of the diplomatic mission of Cameroon took the opportunity to thank and congratulate President Denis Sassou for his decisive contribution to the achievement of sub-regional integration projects. Lazam Puel Bala was appointed Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary of the Republic of Cameroon to the Republic of Congo by presidential decree on October 15, 2020. In the course of this newscast, but before she, she comes back, the annual revision of the electoral registers have been officially launched in Garoua with a call for political parties and civil society organizations to encourage people to register. The, the Director General of Elections, Eric Esuze, was speaking in Garoua today as he launched this exercise. He also urged the event to lay the foundation stone for the construction of the North Elecam branch. Winston, Wilson Bengole is a man on that beat in Garoua. At the premises of the North Regional Delegation of Post and Telecommunications, where the ceremony to launch the revision exercise took place, the Director General of Elections noted a satisfactory turnout of people registering at Eleka Mobile Post set up for the event. Mr. Eric Esuse called on youth, women and citizens of voting age to register on the electoral list. Uh, those who are 20 years and uh, open, and we want to mobilize all the youth to be registered uh, in our local branches here in Garwa. Elekam also counts on civil society organizations and political parties to mobilize their members for the success of the revision exercise. Before election, we have to prepare for the coming up election. So from now, going up to still the day that the election will be, we are starting registering the youth who have not ever registered. Besides launching of the revision of the electoral registers for 2021, the Director General of Elections Cameroon also laid the foundation stone for the construction of a permanent building to house the services of the North Regional Delegation of ELECAM. For National Dialogue and Reconciliation, MPDR has called on Cameroonians to register on electoral list. Shanda Tomne, president of the MPDR, was speaking at a press dinner with journalists. Here's an excerpt of the uh, Professor Shanda, interviewed by Gilbert Ongene. Uh, we are out to play uh, fully the role of a political party, to go for elections, for presidential elections, for any elections and for anything meaning that a minister, political party should jump in and try to get the country move forward to help the dialogue and reconciliation be something quite possible. 
Reports from Bamenda in the Northwest region indicates that many schools have effectively resumed for the second term this Tuesday after a timid start on Monday due to a ghost town operation. Many schools uh, are laying emphasis on fighting the coronavirus and uh, the pandemic through the two-shift system and the obligatory wearing of face masks. Kilo Valerie Sala reports from CRTV Northwest in Bamenda. The second term school resumption in the Northwest region unfolded within a double health and political crisis context. At the government bilingual high school by Elaine Bamenda, measures have been taken to tackle the health challenge. We have disinfected the school and uh, we have put in place buckets to wash hands. Hand sanitizers are available in all the classrooms. We are running a two shift system here. In other institutions visited in Bamenda, there are signs of statistical improvement in student enrollment. This morning, already 375 there are around. Well, we have 15 teachers present. One is absent. According to statistics disclosed by the Northwest Delegation of Secondary Education, over 40,000 students have enrolled in schools across the Northwest region for this new academic year. In a related development, education stakeholders in the southwest region have equally pledged to ensure the smooth functioning of the school year following the start of the second term. CRTV's Ethel Edimo Lifita Mbela visited some schools in Boya to size up the effectiveness of the start of classes. And here's our report. These are class three pupils of Ecole Public Francophone receiving one of their lessons for the day as classes pick up steam in the region. According to the health teacher, Ombe Valentin, the takeoff for the second term is effective. Enrollment is 284 pupils, 15 are absent, 13 teachers. They are there all. In secondary schools, classes have equally started. Today we had a full house. Um, the students are there, 100%. And the teachers are there. Everything is in place. We are grateful that the new year is beginning well. We have effectively resumed classes. Our total enrollment is 312 and today we have 309. We are definitely very grateful because it's a good beginning. Education stakeholders of the region are encouraging students and teachers who are yet to resume to do so, so as to catch up with the syllables. The new resident coordinator for the United Nations Systems in Cameroon, Mathia Zanannap, was guest of the Minister of Labor and Social Security today. The August guest and the minister discussed perspectives for cooperation in promoting decent work, fighting child labor and protecting migrant workers. Beatrice Losamba reports on the audience. It's been four months since the new resident coordinator of the UN Systems in Cameroon took up office in the middle of a global health crisis. At the start of a new year, when hopes are alive, Matthias Zananap nurses dreams of a sound collaboration with the country's ministries to improve coherence and effectiveness at work for the development of Cameroon. This latest guest at the Ministry of Labor and Social Security announced his plans to add steam to projects get towards promoting decent work, protecting migrant workers, and discouraging child labor. I congratulate the minister in making sure that several laws were put in place, for instance, the labor code and also uh, laws related to domestic work. The Ghanaian born discusses many venues of cooperation with Minister Grigua Ouna, who assures Cameroon's collaboration with the International Labor Organization and other UN agencies will not be compromised in any way. I urge you once again to put on your face masks, to wash your hands regularly, and to consult a physician or any other health personnel if you notice any symptoms. This is the only way to save lives and to curb the spread of the virus.
The number of persons tested positive for COVID-19 has continued to increase daily due to the non-respect of barrier measures, health officials say. Recent confirmed COVID-19 trend stands at 8% per month with a serious implication on public life. Let's join Baldwin Sama at the Public Health Emergency Center, Operations Center with his guest, Dr. Joseph Fokam, with updates. Hello, Baldwin. Good evening to you, Gladys Tate. I should say these are telling signs that uh, more and more uh, communes have uh, simply stopped respecting these outline barrier measures with uh, this increase in the number of persons tested positive for the COVID-19 on a daily basis. With our guest tonight, Dr. Joseph Fokam, let's uh, find out uh, what are the implications with uh, this 8% increase uh, with uh, the number of persons tested positive for COVID-19 uh, every month. Uh, good evening to you, Doctor. Good evening, buddy. 8% monthly in terms of a positivity rate. Uh, uh, what was the case end of 2020 and early 2021, and what implications as far as uh, the society, public life is concerned? Yes, effectively, Baldwin. What we realize is we, were, we have succeeded to stabilize our, our, our rate of positivity around 8% monthly. But now with this, within this festive period, after Christmas, we had about 16% positive uh, rate. And surprisingly also yesterday, so after New Year, we have moved up to 19%, which seems to be a significant increment as compared to what we have been seeing earlier. And this simply means that the respect of barrier measures within the community is not really effective. So probably we need to go with some kind of avoidance of non-essential movement within the community in order to make sure we should mitigate this virus in our context, which already is becoming more and more worrisome in our context, please. Thank you so much, Dr. Joseph Fokam, for always being available to give us uh, uh, the right information with regards to the spread of, uh, this deadly of this deadly virus. As it has always been the case, we will continue reminding Camunians of the necessity to respect all these outlined barrier measures in order to limit the spread of the coronavirus in Cameroon. Back to you, Gladys Tata. Well, uh, thank you very much uh, once again, uh, Baldwin Saman. Hope to be in your company same time tomorrow. And uh, the Director General of uh, CRTV, Sean Dongo, has exhorted the newly installed staff of the corporation to work diligently in ensuring that the coverage of the upcoming African Nations Championship uh, is satisfactory. This was during an installation ceremony organized at the production center here in Balatu and by video conferencing. And Sean Dongo has highlighted perspectives for the year that uh, making the CRTV leading broadcaster in the African, in the Central African subregion. Uh, we shall be coming back to that uh, report in a, the, a subsequent newscast. And as I was telling you earlier, Caroline Okia, you're just back from the Central African Republic, where you cover the presidential elections and uh, uh, Theodore uh, Akanjo Twadera are won. So another victory for this president, Caroline Okia. Uh, what uh, are his plans for the? Um, uh, uh, countries for his country's uh, reconstruction. You're right. Um, one more victory again for Twadera. He won, and these are some of the projects that he had in mind. Should in case he was re-elected, when we had um, an encounter with him at uh, the Palais de Renaissance in Central Africa Republic, he said he was going to embark on the reconstruction of the roads in Central Africa, the buildings, and of course the Chinese government is there, the World Bank is there, the IMF is there to help. I want to let you know that um, Central Africa Republic, contrary to what many people think, is a vast country. It is France, Belgium, and Switzerland combined. It has about 6, 633,000 meters square. That's how big the country is. So, but then we don't have infrastructure in the building, in, 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 in the country. Yeah. The countries. That's why he said one of his major projects will be to embark in the it's reconstruction priority pro yeah. you know, mm. of the whole country. And he also talked about economic, um, um, uh, relaunching the economy because he said when he took over from his predecessor, the economy was less than 2% growth rate. But because of the COVID, he should have been on 5%, you know. Increased rate. So, so those are some of the projects that he has. He has the World Bank that is there. As a matter of fact, he said in mid-January, he will there will be the board meeting with um, the World Bank and the IMF to review some of the projects, you know, that um, um, uh, that are ongoing. You know, see which ones are working and which ones are not working. And of course, you have MINISCA, that is there, the United Nations Peacekeeping Force, that is in um, Central Africa, helping to rebuild this country, both security-wise as well as you know, infrastructure, the rehabilitation roads and other things in the country. So, Caroline, and uh, what is uh, uh, Cameroon's role in the Central African Republic uh, peacekeeping process? 
You're right. Cameroon plays a major role there. As a matter of fact, right now we have 1,030 troops in um, working on that MINUSCA, that is uh, the peacekeeping force in Central Africa. They're helping uh, to secure the country for peace as well as humanitarian activities. And um, while we were there, we witnessed or walked to them, saw how they were helping the, uh, the, the community in terms of uh, giving them water. You have areas where there's no water. So, so economic so, facilities. Yeah, you want economic, to humanitarian facilities, social yeah. facilities, you know, they're helping in that. And we also have our ambassador there, the Cameroon ambassador to Central Africa Republic, who is a pacifier, he is a guarantor among the people that are playing the, uh, the, the, a major role in the peace process that is in between the rebels and the government. Well, thank you very much for being here, Caroline, okay, and uh, congratulations for your uh, appointment today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. General Manager. Okay, thank you very much, and uh, a special prayer for a session for the repose of the souls of victims of the road accidents in Dikini Meki has been said in Fumban West region of Cameroon. The interreligious service initiated by the Sultan of the Bamos, Senator Ibrahim Bombon Joya, was attended by many. As you tell us, Go Henry from CRTV West in Bafusam. The explanate of the Fuman Central Mosque was full to capacity as sons and daughters of the Nun converged to mourn the victims of the Dikinimiki car accident convened by the Sultan of the Bamums, Senator Ibrahim Bombonjoya, men of God from the Roman Catholic, the Evangelical Church of Cameroon EEC, and the Imam of the Fuman Central Mosque took turns to pray for the lives of the sons and daughters of the Nun who perished during the accident last December the 27th along the Bafusam Yaounde Highway. Almost all the 39 victims were from the noon with the Kutaba subdivision alone, recording 32. The Sultan of the Bamums said it was the first time the number of sons and daughters of the division perished a day since he took over the throne among the plethora of dignitaries who turned out for the event was the minister delegate at the Ministry of Transport, Zakaria Wunjoya. Some five African teams to take part in the upcoming African Nations Championship built for Cameroon as from January 16 are already in the country. Four of the said countries are part of the pre shan Mini Tournament, while Burkina Faso, one of Cameroon's Group A opponents, is training at the Mundi Sports Complex here in Yaoundé. Baldwin Sama took interest on their life in Cameroon ahead of the competition and put together the following report for the 7.30 News. They are in Cameroon for the first time. The intermediate queens of Uganda for several days have been enjoying their stay in this hotel apart from the regular pre shan tournament matches. The reception we've had from the hotel, from the federation, you know, has all been very, you know, very hospitable, you know, first class. I think, you know, maybe it's a little bit unfortunate just with the times we're in in terms of the pandemic. The COVID-19 pandemic has kept most of them indoors and some of these players have fallen in love with some local delicacies. Some nice food here, uh, some good fish, nice chicken, nice meat and everything is moving out so happy. Mm, chicken, chicken is good in here in Cameroon. The, the way they cook the food is really good. And there is no difference apart from, there is no difference away from the one they prepare back home. On their part, the intermediate stallions of Burkina Faso have been lodged in this hotel on the outskirts of Yaoundé since last weekend. The team spent an entire day in this complex with different training and relaxation sessions programs as they enjoyed their stay waiting for the official start of the competition. Well, uh, that's where we call it quits on this edition of the 7.30 News. Thanks for watching. The News in French comes up in under 30 minutes with Adele Mbala. I'll be, I'll be back uh, same time tomorrow. Until then, it's bye from all of us on the 7.30 crew. Good night. COVID-19 plunged many families into mourning and seriously hampered the functioning of our economy and 
Society.